DFT properties. Now we are going to see the properties of DFT and its proof. Now first we will see the linearity property. DFT actually obeys the law of linearity. That is if x1 of n when you are taking endpoint DFT it is equal to x1 of k and x2 of n when you are taking endpoint DFT it is equal to x2 of k then for any two constants that is a and b a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n will be that is uh, when you are taking endpoint DFT it will be equal to a into x1 of k plus b into x2 of k. Now let us see the proof for this linearity property. We know the DFT of uh, signal x of n is given by x, k, x of k is equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e power minus j 2 pi k n. Now we are considering x of n is equal to a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n. So in the place of x of n, if you are taking a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n and if you are separating this two terms, that is a uh, summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 a into x1 of n into e power minus j2 by k n by n plus the next summation summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 b into x2 of n into e power minus j2 by k n by n. Then we can take this uh, constant outside because it is for uh, variable n. Then it will be equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n into e power minus j2 by k n by n. Similarly for the next term. So when you are taking the summation, this is actually equal to the DFT of the sequence x1 of n. The DFT of the sequence x1 of n is given by x1 of k. Similarly when you are taking the second term, that is a summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n into e power minus j2 by k n by n. That is actually equal to the DFT of the sequence x2 of n. So it is equal to a into x1 of k plus b into x2 of k. So hence it is proved when you are taking a into x1 of n plus b into x2 of n as input. When you are taking n point dft it is equal to a into x1 of k plus b into x2 of k. Next let us see the periodicity property. If x1 of n when you are taking n point dft it is equal to x1 of x of k. Then x of n plus capital N equal to X of N for all N. Then capital X of K plus N is equal to capital X of K for all K. Now let us see the proof. DFT of X of N is given by X of K which is equal to summation N equal to 0 to N minus 1 X of N into E power minus J 2 pi K N by N. Now we are going to find capital X of K plus N that is we are going to replace k by k plus capital N. So DFT is equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n e power minus j 2 pi k plus n into small n divided by n. Now we are going to split this e power minus j 2 pi k plus n by k plus n into n by n term into 2 that is e power minus j 2 pi k n by n into e power minus j 2 pi n into n by n. Now we are going to cancel this capital N capital N. We know that integer multiple powers of complex exponential equal to 1. So now it is equal to summation n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e power minus j 2 pi k n by n which is equal to x of k. Therefore x of k plus n equal to x of k. Hence proved. Next let us see the multiplication of two DFTs and circular convolution property. Circular convolution of two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n when we are taking endpoint dft it is equal to x1 of k into x2 of k that is multiplication of two dfts convolution of circular convolution of two sequences x1 of m and x2 of m is given by x3 of n which is equal to summation m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m into x2 of n minus m which is circularly shifted with period n now let us see the proof finite sequences x1 of n and x2 of n both of length capital N. Their respective endpoint DFTs are x1 of k and x2 of k. We know the DFT of uh, x1 of n and x2 of n. If we multiply two DFTs together x1 of k and x2 of k the result is another DFT x3 of k 
is of same length dn now to find the circular convolution we have to take inverse dft of this x3 of k next in the place of x3 of k i'm going to take x1 of k and x2 of k next i am going to substitute the uh, expression for x1 of k and x2 of k to distinguish x1 of k and x2 of k for x1 of k we are taking the variable m for x2 of k we are taking the variable l next i am going to change the order of summation and combine all the e power terms together in the next step i am going to replace that e power term by a variable a where a equal to e power j 2 pi into n minus m minus l divided by n we number the equation as equation number 1 we know that summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 a power k will be equal to n if a is equal to 1 and it is equal to 1 minus a power in the higher uh, power that is n minus 1 plus 1 divided by 1 minus a if a is not equal to 1 for a is equal to 1 the exponential term must be equal to 1 to get that exponential term must be equal to 1 n minus m minus l must be an integer multiple of capital n when a is not equal to 1 that a power n term will be equal to 1 so 1 minus a power n by 1 minus a when you substitute that value that will be equal to 0 therefore from equation 1 that summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 a power k will be equal to n for a equal to 1 and 0 when a is not equal to 1 so in the place of a if you are taking e power j term that is uh, summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 e power j 2 pi k n minus m minus l divided by n that is equal to n if n is if it is a multiples of n and it equal to it is equal to 0 otherwise now we are going to substitute this in the equation Roman letter 1 when we move this x2 of l term inside the summation m l becomes n minus m minus q n now we rewrite this term x2 of l now we cancel the numerator and denominator n here the term x2 of n minus m minus q n represent x2 is circularly shifted with period n so it can be represented as x2 of n minus m suffix capital n so this x3 of n represent the circular convolution of the two sequences x1 of m and x2 of m here the second sequence is circularly time reversed and circularly shifted with respect to the first sequence so the circular convolution property is proved.